Well, folks, I've finally done it. I squared up this thing. This is the fixture plate for my milling attachment, and it has it was uh it was pretty bad. Like I I drilled all the holes before I even squared it up on the attachment, so there was quite a bit to take off of there. And it was quite a bit of practice just trying to get, because uh, I couldn't do the whole thing in one shot, so I had to do one side and then flip it over and then do the other side. But uh, it turned out okay. Like, uh, I got it almost perfect. So my only real vice, and by vice, I mean vise, vice, whatever, <laughs> is this thing. And it's not much good. It was really only meant for holding th big things like like the index of my thingy here or a hex block so what I'm planning on doing with this is making some sort of removable jaws attachments that I can actually bolt right onto this thing to make this a little more versatile around the shop so what I'm doing here I already I already faced off one side here and I'm gonna face off this side as well uh, honestly I find that like for in my present situation squaring off Making a square block in a lathe is actually uh, works quite well. I've done it many times already with uh, far more precarious pieces than this, and it works really good. Now, seeing as this is just a, a series of facing operations, it's not overly critical how centered the part is, right? So, really, when you're dialing these in, you don't really have to put an indicator on every side, especially with something like this, because you're never going to be able to get all those sides like that unless you can put some pieces on the outside and then use a test indicator or something but that's honestly more of a pain in the ass than it's worth as far as i'm concerned what you can do to make this a little bit easier you can set up your tool so it's so you line it up with the edge and then just uh find the closest get it as close as possible every time you spin it and, and line it up with the tool and uh and that's pretty much it. And then even with the same side here, you can do the exact same thing. You know, line it up with the very tip of your tool until it's until it's pretty much dead center, and you can get that within a couple thou. Like it's not it's not hard at all. All right, so I left that little tip there so you can see. Now that's just eyeballing with the tool. And that is very close to center of that part. So like, you know, you don't really need to indicate these weird things. Like that is almost bang on right there. So you really can't go wrong that way. I guess I kind of forgot to mention when you're doing this, you got to consider this, uh, you know, your speeds and feeds too. You don't want to go too fast. Like I know it makes it, you get a better finish, but you gotta consider that as a, something with a four inch wide radius on there. Or a four inch diameter. So right now, I, you know, those chips are coming off super hot. I don't wanna be here all damn day. <laughs> There you go. As you can see, it leaves a, it does leave quite a nice finish on there. So, not too shabby at all. All right, guys. A quick little demonstration here to tell you what I was talking about earlier. You see how it's lined up with the tool right there, and then there, not quite so much. So, just loosen that side off, tighten that side up, and you can get this extremely close. I like little swirls to match up. <laughs> Call me funny that way. And the same with the other sides. It's uh, pretty basic. All right. Well, you seen me face off that other part. So I'm going to get, uh, I'll do this side and this side. I'm actually going to cut these ends off with the bandsaw. And I'll, I'll meet you back in a little bit. So 
That is pretty damn close. That's within half a thou. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna face this sucker off. Nice and easy like. Since we got lots of stick out, I'm probably just gonna take small passes. Not like that last ones. And that pretty much is it. Should have a nice square part. Yeah, looking good. Looking real good. <laughs> All right, guys, so here's my crude little uh, diagram of what I plan on doing with this uh, square block. It turned out pretty darn good. I, uh, I blacked it up a little bit. I threw some layout lines in there. You can kind of see where they are. Uh, that one, oh, I want to do that. That's going to be a V groove in there, and V groove right there, as illustrated in the drawing. And then I uh, marked some holes out here too. And that's going to be the ones back here. And then two more right here. That's those two. Yeah, that would be those two. And then this is all going to get hogged out about a quarter inch deep, in which the plate will be sitting. And that way, these four holes should end up in between these holes here, and it shouldn't interfere with nothing. So you kind of see where I'm going with this, and then there'll be a nice V-groove in there for things. Because what I wanted to be able to do is take it from here, and then flip it up to here if I have to. And then this will be the other piece with uh, whatever. I haven't quite decided where to go with that yet. But that way the V grooves will uh, line up either here or here. And I'll be able to clamp uh, shafts or, or little round objects in there, what have you. And I'd like to actually make this fit on every side, but we'll see how that goes. Because, you know, theoretically you could put it just about anywhere. Anyways, I'm going to get the milling attachment set up. Probably gonna have to use this to index the holes and all I'm gonna really do is just uh, You know, I'll just take the center drill and Center them out and probably just drill them out of the drill press. I think that'll be the first thing I got to do This is so hard <laughs> Well, if I'm close, that should be right where it's got to be, ish. <laughs> yeah, it looks good here. Yep, I'm going to call that good. Okay, so I'm going to lock my compound where it's at. Just index those holes right where they are. This is pretty, this is actually pretty tough to do with the <laughs> with this thing. <laughs> now that we know where we are in space, so this, this should be a little easier now. <laughs> I almost thought we were gonna have enough travel errors. It's right on the right on the brink. <laughs> All right, we got our holes all indexed. I'll try to make that not look so hard on editing. <laughs> but I went ahead and I did three sides on this thing too. Well, not that one, this side and this side. And I'll drill and tap those ones, probably to, for a quarter inch, uh, maybe fine thread. And uh, these will just get drilled and reamed out. And then once I get that done, uh, I'm gonna hold off on the countersinking because I don't, well, I don't have any countersinks, <laughs> so, so I'll hold off on that for the time being. All right, well, I'm going to go over to the drill press, drill all these out, and I'll see you in a bit.
All right, so I went and hit this thing and he burned it off camera there. Well, that's our piece. Milled out uh, relatively good, I think. <laughs> what I'm gonna have to do now is figure out a way to get a 45, uh, you know, little V groove in there, add one over here, and that'll be able to make it from, you know, so the guy will be able to transfer from top or the bottom or the side. It'll be a little bit more versatile. And I already test fitted our block up there. On two sides and it's fitting pretty good except for that one there's one shitty hole down here I don't know what the hell happened with that guy tell with that guy <laughs> so far so good all right well here's the, the borsted right here honestly I had to take it put it back in the mill or milling attachment and to shave another ten thou off the back there and I even oversized the holes a little bit just to make sure that sucker fit because it, it was really it's not hard, easy to index on this thing but for all but one of the holes on this thing they all seem to start nice and easy just with their fingers and the register ain't terrible I guess I still got to figure out how to mill a 45 in there and across here. Huh. Well, I don't know the exact definition of janky, but if I made up the word, this is the setup I would use to describe it. But that's our 45 degree block there. And it should work. It, uh, I'm not even sure if I dialed it in right, but it seems to be, seems to be okay from what I can tell. Looking at the travel wise anyway. I think it's not. We'll see what the first pass looks like. And uh, take it from there, I guess. But I really don't, I really don't want to mess with this now. It was a kind of a kind of a pain in the ass to get going. So and you can see it's it's close to center, but not quite a eh? like I was actually actually I could even just switch to a smaller end mill for this. Hmm. I think I might do that. Oh yeah, we'll definitely hit center now. No problem. Yeah, so there's a. Uh, I'm just taking a couple skim passes in there. Just deep enough to make a mark. And then kind of. Because it's going to. It took a couple little. Little adjustments with the bolts there and everything. This, this is the problem with a janky setup like this. Like you got to kind of. You know, but it's actually feeling about the same all the way down now. And I'm going kind of by sound and feel on the lead screw. And sight, but you know, mostly like you can feel it. And it feels about the same resistance all the way down now. So and it's actually looking pretty good and straight too, actually. I think we're probably good right about there. And you can't trust that V block or that uh, angle block thing at all. You know, you got it. It's definitely 45 degrees, but it's. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good, I think. Back around, take a quick look, see here. Oh yeah, that's looking pretty decent, I think. How's that looking? Well, that's a V-groove. Looking pretty shitty. No, it actually looks good. going to take a little cleanup, but it's nice and center though. That's that's what I was looking for. It's looking actually really uniform. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to get down to this. I'm gonna, I need some more attention on this. This is a kind of a freaky setup, so I'm going to have to put you guys on the side. I'll get back to you when, I'm, when I get this part done. All right, well, there's our V-groove. It's actually, that's probably big enough. I'm going to give it a quick skim pass just to make up for any deflection there might have been uh, from side milling because that's a pretty big side mill for a little, little end mill. So I'm just going to go to skim pass here. All right, well, now 
now, in theory, putting it back to zero, should put dead nuts on center. Right there. In theory. Well, it looks pretty good, I think. Eyeball wise, I can't tell any any different. <laughs> So I think we got to start taking smaller passes as we go on because now it's getting more and more into the side milling. You know, maybe. So wow, when you when you need a welder, you sure need a welder, eh? I think everybody needs a welder. <laughs> that sure came in handy. This was actually a, a pretty difficult little project for me, given the uh, limitations of all my tooling and stuff. But uh, all right, so that looks pretty good. You know, like whatever I put in there, I'll no doubt have to dial it all in anyway. So I'm not too bad, too bad. I'm pretty happy with that to be honest. Just take a little deburring and washing that ink off of there. Let's see what this does. But all in all, I don't know what the hell that is, but all in all it turned out pretty good. Exactly how I drawed it out. <laughs> I thought I'd spare you uh, <laughs> the indignity of watching me trying to square off. Uh, crap in the lathe again. I went ahead and I drilled these holes too while I was at it. Well, I gotta tell you, that's the closest I've ever came to two holes without ever penetrating them. Oh crap, that came out wrong. But this is essentially done already. Like it's uh, there's not much more to go with this actually. It's uh, so far everything seems to be, well, so this was the plan of attack here. Get some bolts in there. Oh, they even go in. I think that bolt's a little chewed up. And then I was going to take one of these bolts. See that in here. I wasn't sure what to do with this. So I thought, well, I'll just screw it because it's, uh, it's nothing too fancy. Then I went and even flattened off one side on this. And put a couple little divots in there because I'm not really sure. I would like to put some some bar in there I guess so that they have something to uh, a good solid guide and keep it from lifting up as much 
It's only going to be coming out of an inch. Like, I don't expect it to ever have a travel like that. It's only going to travel because this is movable, right? So, it's only ever going to come out maybe that far. So, what I got to do for this is figure out how to get two pieces of round stock and fit through those nice holes there. And weld to here. Weld or bolt, or screw. I don't know. Alright, so now what you see me doing here is I'm just turning it down to a set uh, to three eighths so I can get a decent press fit on that uh, little piece of plate that's going to be the uh, move, moving part of the vice jaw. And I drilled and reamed the holes up down to three eighths. So, like, I'm not really taking a whole lot of big cuts on this. I'm, I'm more worried about the collet, to be honest. <laughs> All right, so I kind of plan on welding this in from the back side, so I want a pretty decent, uh, yeah, I still got a little bit more to go there. I guess it'll fit on the other one. Nope. I was trying to nail it on the first try, but I guess not. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got to take a couple of that off it. Perfect. It's still a little tight to fit into that hole, so I want a really good slip fit, piston side, piston fit. <laughs> This is the most you know, non intrusive way to remove material, I guess. Alright, well, I think I may have actually made my tolerances just a little too high. That's a, you know, if these are out even by a freaking atom, <laughs> they're going to be a. Uh, It's pretty freaking close. It is so hard to tell. I, just, I know that the that collet's just a little bit out, so I'm going to try to see if I can't get these to work really nice. If I just kind of spin in them, see which one is, uh, see where they fit together the best. Yeah, they're just out by even just a smidge. I'm going to be trying to bust them apart again. I'll try to press that together in the vise and see what happens, I guess. <laughs> yeah, this is probably the most 
the highest precision thing I might have built from scratch. I highly doubt this is going to come apart after I do this. <laughs> or it's going to move or, or if it even moves. No. Nope. No, nope, it's fucked. No, nope, I need that to go in and out. I may have to polish those down some. That's just too tight. Hopefully this will pop it open. All right. That's her right there. Well, I didn't weld those down yet, but... Uh, and I'm going to probably face that up a little bit. But uh, as far as I can tell, it took a little bit of doing to get this to... <laughs> like I, have, I did have a problem with this piece. It was uh, binding on this side. So I flipped it around and that's that side's not machined at all. So I just uh, I hit that with the file. You're not going to have to see that anyway. But this right there, like that's, that's tight. That's a nice snug snug just slightly interrupted fit I'm like yeah that's that's beautiful I didn't think I could even make that but like that's really tight and like it doesn't even move once you but, you but it does move freely when you push it up so I think we're good right there everything's bolted down so nothing can move and what I really wanted to do the was uh, I guess you know, demonstration purposes just imagine that there's parallels under there <laughs> but if I got to like face up a weird part like this right and like that's well, you can whack it around a little bit but that's in there pretty damn good and these jaw, this jaw ain't gonna, it's, it's so tight. Like there's, if it does lift up, it's not going to be by much. Cause that's a, like, I mean like a half a thou at best. That's tight, tight, tight. There's no movement in that whatsoever. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And this does pop out, so. And that's the piece, that's where I filed it down. So just to, just so it doesn't inter interfere with that. And it fits in like every which way. So I can't believe how precise I was with these holes. That's that's uh, not that's not usual uh, Chris, Chris work. <laughs> and I did, I made a big divot down there. And I rounded the end of this bolt off so it sits in that divot really good. There we go. Oh, that's freaking awesome. Well, I'm hoping it doesn't bugger up when I weld it. All right. Here's our test run here. Well, oh, oh, thank God. I was pretty worried there for a second. <laughs> well, I, I welded it all up, plug welded the ends there, and uh, draw filed it till it was pretty, you know, relatively nice and straight. As far as I can tell, with just a little uh, straight edge ruler or whatever. I guess you don't light through there, so it's good enough for definitely plenty good enough for what I use it for. <laughs> Maybe even too good. Uh, oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. I was worried about that part right there. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, I don't know. I think that's. I think we're done. That kind of went to, went too good almost. Well, that is a far cry better than what I have been using. Holy grapes. Definitely going to have to get a good thumbnail pick of that on the milling attachment. And that's just by hand, a little half inch head on there. So it would appear I didn't bugger it up by welding it. Oh, fuck yeah. That is awesome. Oh, there might be lots of swears in this one, guys. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Awesome. I don't know how accurate it is, though, as far as uh, squareness goes. Where's the Metatoyos? <laughs> Just out of curiosity, what do we got here? Uh. 
focus. Looking at two inches and almost 400 thou on that side. Oh, a little bit shorter on this side, I think. Ooh, maybe. Yeah, it's actually about 20 thou difference, probably. I'm get, guesstimate. That's okay. Crepes given. Even when it's getting thrown on top of it, that's still uh, pretty awesome. Yeah, like I said, it's not a precision vise. And from what I could tell before, like this is nice and really nice and square in here too. So, so it should should be a nice uh, should be a very nice unit to work with compared to the other stuff. <laughs> Kind of looks like, I don't know, looks like, what the hell it looks like? It looks like a bad robot production right here. I'm not affiliated, but <laughs> hope it don't get sued. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Woo! That is kick ass. I love it. All right, well, I wouldn't be doing it justice if I left this piece of crap on here. Yeah, I'm sure it'll still come in useful at some point, but it's definitely not going to be my go-to clamp anymore. Get this on. Oh, too late. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> if you're quick, sometimes you can get those in there. <laughs> Much better. And this will be able to switch in either side direction, so... Well, that's about it for me, folks. <laughs> that was quite a build. Pretty happy with how that turned out. That's much better than what I had before. That's about all I got in me tonight. So you guys have a good night. Stay safe out there. Peace out.